Welcome to the Rogue Academy. My name is Sarah. I am an ensemble member and teaching artist and education manager with Rogue Artists Ensemble. Today we're going to be making some super fun and fabulous rod puppets inspired by the story Anansi the Spider by Gerald McDermott. Um, but really you can make characters from any story using these techniques or just any puppet that you could use in your imagination. To get started, we're going to need some materials. Some things that are going to be really helpful are making sure you find some sort of either heavy paper or light cardboard to make the main body of the puppet so it has, it has a little bit more sturdiness. Some tissue boxes or some other light boxes from your recycling work well. Some other things that work well are some cardstock if you have that in a home office, or some folders, even home like old folders. You can cut these out, and the material is a little heavier. And I also found this brochure in my recycling. It's a little bit heavier weight, and that'll be great. Now, once you have that, of course, you need to decorate. Decoration, the world is your oyster. You can use some colorful paper and do some collaging, cut out shapes and collage. You could use markers or colored pencils to draw faces on or crayons. Um, it's really totally up to you. To hold things together and to cut them out, the tools you need are some scissors, some tapes, scotch tape works, masking tape works, some glue. Glue sticks are amazing in this project if you have some glue sticks at home. And for the rod, a pencil is fantastic. A wooden spoon is also very nice to use. And even some kitty toys. I have kitties, so I have these lovely rod toys and I could use this. I could attach my puppet to the top part and puppeteer with this. Now the danger is that your kitty then might want to play with your puppets. So I'm going to leave you to do that risk assessment for yourself. So we're going to get into some of the puppet building. Now one of the really cool things about this book is the geometric designs that the artist uses. Um, so this is, so one of the things you got to do first is choose which character you want to design and then look at what shapes there are. Like we have some, a triangle here, we have an X-shaped body, a rectangle, some other two triangles connected, a circle, and kind of like an infinity sign or an eight almost. Um, so let's choose, or a Nancy is also a triangle. I'm just going to go ahead and make my version of a Nancy. And we're going to start with looking at some triangles. I'm going to start with this because I think this purple is super cool and awesome. You can use black like the artist in the book or any color. Use your imagination and your creativity. So I'm just pulling apart this box to get a flat piece of paper or of cardboard. And, um, and then I'm going to cut out my shape. So cut out your color. Now let's talk square. One really cool thing about squares is actually if you look at them, if you cut it in half, you have a triangle. Wow! A triangle. If you want a circle, all you gotta do is Cut off the corners. Round out the corners. There you go. And that's a very simple way to make a circle out of a square. Just take the corners off. So figure out what shape you want your body to be and go ahead and do that now. If you notice in this book, all the spider head shapes are kind of little teardrop shapes. So I'm going to go ahead and make myself a little teardrop out of this little piece. I'm going to make it the long way because I want to use this full length. And I just 
try to get all the way to the edges so that I'm really using my material well and just freehanding a little teardrop like this. Now I'm like, hmm, how does that look? So I'm gonna hold it up to my body and I'm like, oh, I like it. There you go. Okay, great. And again, if you don't want all those pre-designs on it, you can use the back side and color it in. Now, in order to attach these pieces together, you can put a little glue from the glue stick here. You can put a little Elmer's white glue and then just push it together. And if you don't have the glue, you can always just use some tape as well. And I can use scotch tape right here and just, voila, attached. And now you have a little head on your puppet body. Now let's talk about puppet or spider legs. You see how they have the little bend in there? Now you could get very fancy and draw out a little bent piece on one piece of cardboard and then cut out the bend. That's a little too fancy for me personally. What I like to do is cut two straight pieces, like two little strips, like here's one, here's two, there you go. Now I have these two bits together. All I need to do is glue them or tape them and I have a bend. And you can adjust the angle of your bend however you want. You can make adjust the length of your legs best by trimming them a little bit. And then you have your spider body and you can start attaching the legs just like that. So go ahead, spiders have eight legs. They're arachnids, which means they have eight legs. So go ahead and create eight pairs of legs. Also, if you just want straight legs, that's cool. It's your creation. Now I'm gonna start putting these together to create all of my legs. Now, here's one that I glued together already. You can see just kind of what we're going for here. It's very simple to put them together. All you have to do is take one piece and one piece, decide, make sure you have the angle that you want. Now, once you have that together, I'm gonna put glue on the back side of this one, right here, just a little bit of my white glue, a little dollop. Oop, uh-oh, here we go, running out. Oh no! Little dollop, here we go. Uh oh. Glue sticks are really awesome for this activity because they have a fa uh, faster drying time and they also are a little less messy than white glue. But, you know, you use what you got. All my glue sticks were at school and the school closed. What are you gonna do? Once you have all of your individual legs assembled, you can start to lay them out to see how they look, which one you think should be on top, in the middle, and on the bottom. One of the ways I like to glue them on the body is actually to put them behind, because I just think that makes a nice, clean look. look. So, that so that it would look something like that when it's all said and done. Again, we're just gonna add a little dollop of glue on to the leg. There it is, just a little dab. That's all it takes. And voila. You're gonna do all the legs on the one side. You can do all the legs on both sides this way, gluing them onto the body. Or, I'm going to show you in a second, if you would like to have one set of legs that you can manipulate and move with another rod, I'm going to show you that in just one second. So a couple little bonus tips on how to sturdy up your puppet uh, just a little bit. You see how these legs are overlapping? You can actually add little pieces of glue here so that where they touch, you glue them together and then it all gets a lot stronger. And another way is on the back, you see where all of these pieces attach to the body? I'm going to put a little piece of masking tape across there just to help them hold into place. It just makes it a little bit stronger overall. 
And now let's add some glue to the knees, help to hold those together just a little bit again. Oop. <laughs> and then you glue them together like that. Okay. Okay, so now I have this fantastic, very sturdy set of legs on this side, but let's say I want to manipulate this side with another rod. Well, you do the legs in the same manner. You organize them, beautifully done like this. The difference being, they're all gonna to come together at one central point. Now you can take a sharp point of a scissors or a little tiny screwdriver to poke a hole through. This is a thing that you ask help from your parents, okay? No poking sharp items, children by yourself. So you can poke a little hole through and then you'll put a bread and then you decide where you want this on your puppet and you'll poke a hole through the body here and put them like this and attach a brad and then you'll be able to manipulate the whole leg. Now again, you're going to want to glue these knees and things together so this ends up in one big piece. I'm going to do it and I'll show you what it looks like. Poke this hole through. I'm going to take one leg at a time and I take my scissors and the cardboard and I'm just going to put it here towards the center of the cardboard and onto a hard surface and I just poke the hole and wiggle the cardboard. Let me grab it a little bit. Here we go. Poke the hole and kind of wiggle the cardboard like this, holding it in place so that the blade of the scissors can cut a hole without danger of cutting me. And I wait till it gets all the way through. There you see. Oops, just a little bit more. It's like drilling a hole. If you have little tiny drill bits, that works too. But there you go. You don't need a big hole. Just a little bit, and that'll be enough for the brad. Do that on all your legs and then the body also. Okay, I have my puppet with a hole poked in it. I have my legs with holes poked in them, and I'm going to attach them together. So I start with the brad going through the body because I want the legs to be behind to make the nice clean line. I'm gonna put them on one at a time because I find that a little bit easier. And I'm gonna start with the littlest leg because then I can have a nice little stacked effect. So the little one goes on and then the next biggest one. If you make this one solid piece before poking the hole through, that's totally fine too. Um, with the cardboard, it's a little harder to poke through all of that all at once, but if you're using cardstock, um, usually you can poke through all of it at once and just glue it in one piece and then slide that whole piece on. Okay, they're all on. I'm just going to flatten out the brad so it's uh, ready to go. Now. I get to position these legs to make my beautiful puppet shape. Um, now one little tidbit is as you are positioning these, you want them to be able to line up to make something up that a rod can attach to so that you can manipulate this whole thing. So right here I'm purposely gathering a bunch of legs kind of all together so that I can put my rod right here behind this little cluster of legs and that'll help to hide it a little bit and in order in order to keep the things in the shape once I have them positioned the way I want to I'm just going to add those little dollops of glue to attach them together oh yes here we go shake it out again glue sticks super awesome super less messy but mine got left at school so you know what you're gonna do all right, so now I'm going to give that a minute to dry and I'm going to start working on decoration, how I want to do the face. The rods go on last. Congratulations, friends. So now we have the main construction of our puppet 
together and you could manipulate this puppet without doing anything else to it and have a great time. Except for adding rods, of course. But we're going to go a little bit further and add some faces and some things. Remember, also, you don't have to make this fancy one. If that seems a little too much or you don't have a brad, just glue all your legs like you did on this side. Do that to both sides and that will also be a fancy, fun puppet to play with. Now let's look at this. So this is one of the great things I like about this book is how he uses um, shapes in the artwork. We have some stripes here, triangles and circles. So I'm going to be inspired by that and cut some shapes out of my colored paper that I have here. Construction paper is great. This is actually um, just colored office paper, printing paper that I happen to have at home. If you are like, oh, I don't have anything, look in your recycling. Um, chances are you'll find some colors in some magazines or like the newspapers, the advertisements that we usually just throw away or recycle right away. You can find some color in there to cut out. Okay, go to it. I have cut out lots of little shapes as you see, lots of little shapes. The next thing I'm going to do, glue them down. Glue sticks, this white glue, scotch tape, however you want to do it. If you want to draw with colors, uh, crayons, markers, and not do any more gluing, that's fine too. Do whatever inspires you. This is your creativity, you're the artist here. <laughs> When you, once you've completed all of your decoration that you want to do, is to attach the rods. Turn your puppet to the back. The rod will go up about halfway or so. The best way I found to do this is to take some masking tape, put it right over here, and you want to really snug it down right up into the cardboard, right up in there. You can see really close, and then tape it down, and at least two however many can fit, but do two because that'll really stabilize it. If you have one, it'll wiggle all around. Boom, just like that. Oops, don't get your brads in there. And then you want to do the same thing on your legs. Now for the legs, it can be a little bit tricky. I might do this and then I can put tape right along there and then maybe a skinny piece along here. It's kind of however you can fit it. All right, I'm going to our puppet friend. So I've attached my rod. You can see how I attach the rod to the legs. Just do it however you can. Every leg will be different because they'll all be slightly unique in shape. And then... and then you can make your puppet walk by doing a little wiggle, 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 wiggle. Oh, wiggle, 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 wiggle. Take a breath. Take a breath. When your puppet talks, give them a little animation. Because if you have a lot of these puppets all in stage together, their mouths don't move. The way we know they're moving is by giving them a little animation, which is a little different from their walking animation and their breathing animation and walking and breathing. And thanks for joining me today, friends. I had such a good time being your demonstration puppet. That's it. Have fun. I'm going to show you. I'm going to make one more puppet and maybe show you how to set up a puppet theater. For the other puppet I want to play with today, I saw this cool fish. And I have this amazing green folder. So I was like, oh my goodness, that's a fish right there. So what I've done so far is I've cut out some shapes that will be the fish, the main body, some fins, 
the tail fins, the other fins, and now I'm using colored pencils to kind of draw in um, to, uh, in, with the inspiration of this drawing right here. I'm using colored pencils and this green folder to recreate. I'll show you when I'm done. All right, friends, so I finished my fish puppet as well. As you can see, I can now wiggle it and make it swim just by giving a little, little rotation back and forth with my hands. Again, I cut out the different pieces, I drew all the design on them, onto them, and then I glued them together. And as you see, I attached my pencil for a rod, and since this puppet's a little tall, sometimes if they get a little tall, they get a little wobbly, so I actually attached another pencil to stabilize the puppet. As you see, I, I attached it to the original rod that I'll be puppeteering with and then put it up so that it's a little more stable and I can make a nice fishy swim. Have fun! One last thing before we go, friends, just how to set up a quick puppet theater space. I have just two kitchen chairs here and a sheet. Take the space those chairs apart, spread the sheet out, pull it tight so you have a nice flat landscape. Duck yourself down behind, pick those puppets up, and they can start to swim across the land or pop up like a spider and run, 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 or even talk. I am Kwaku Anansi, and I am spider to the Ashanti people. That's it for the Rogue Academy today. My name is Sarah, and again, until we see you, keep on scheming and dreaming. Mm -hmm.